Heather. Heather, well, uh, welcome back to the MMA world here. Um, yeah, how exciting is it just to be back you know, after a little bit of a break here? Um, it's really exciting. I mean, it's been over a year, so it was like kind of shaky in the beginning, but I can't wait to get in there now. Yeah, does it feel like you're doing it all over again in some ways? Yeah, it really does, especially here at the garden. It's like I never do things little. Everything I do has got to be like huge, right? <laughs> That's what I do it. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. I kind of like going home though, but this time we'll go big. You can go home after the fire. <laughs> yeah. And it's a close trip home. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, but how does it compare and contrast? Because obviously you're more, more familiar with the sport. You've trained a lot more going into you know the debut. How are you different than when we've seen you previously in MMA? Um, well, I have a new, a new fight camp. I'm training out at Longo Serra. So I, like, I have all these, like, I love it out there because they're all fight nerds like me. You know, they break everything down, explain things to you, and you get like real hands-on training so I'm super excited for the for the progress I've made and the new stuff I learned so yeah when did you make that move um about two and a half months ago okay. what triggered that well you know I, it's hard to get a coach to commit to you when you're flopping back and forth in both sports so you know I was working with this awesome coach at Henzo's and he was a busy guy you know it's hard for him to commit to me when I'm not committing back to him I have had my last fight and then took two boxing matches had to do my world title I mean you can't be trained and wrestle on jiu-jitsu when you're going into a world title fight so he kind of didn't want to work with me anymore and I had to find a new coach and Ray Longo didn't know it but now he's stuck with me so and will Longo and Sarah be in your corner uh, it will be Longo and Aljo okay are, yeah. you, are you ready for that yeah I'm ready for that he, he we, they've been there for my sparring and stuff so you know I'm a fighter for a long time so I, I can make adjustments just the same to coaches yeah. so you know we work well during doing the rounds together. Yeah. Do you respond? Listening. Yeah. And do you respond well to that very intense in your face kind of cornering style that, that Ray has? Um yeah, but he he's not like that to everybody. He's sure. he's like a big teddy bear. He don't scream at me. <laughs> I joke around too much. He'll be like, Heather, could you take this seriously and stop playing? <laughs> And how do you feel working there has improved your skill set in MMA? It's gotten me so much better on the ground, and like, because there are so many wrestlers there, right? It's not just jujitsu. There are so many wrestlers there, and I love learning the transitions, like from move to move for the cage wrestling. So I, I really kind of got into that a bit this fight camp. Yeah, and you did during this time off for you back into the boxing world, as you mentioned, my world title and everything. Um, I know you said previously that you were only going to go back to boxing for big opportunities. Is that still the mentality, or is this all MMA? MMA at the moment. Um, I, I hate to make a decision now, right? I didn't have this fight yet. I, like I just said to somebody else, I got to kind of stay in my lane. I don't really know where I am yet, but halfway through this fight camp, I thought to myself, you know, if I really went all in, I could do something here. I could be pretty good. You know, everyone around on the team kind of said that too. So it, it is kind of where my mind is going. Like, how far can I go? Could I actually grab this title? Not today, obviously, but maybe if I put a year and a half in, what could happen in, you know, 2020? Is there something in the back of your mind that's holding you back from completely making that decision? Or, like, what, what's it going to take for you to be like, okay, this is 100% what it is? Well, it's kind of like, like I, I've said this a million times, but boxing is like, you know, like a bad boyfriend. Like, he cheats on you, but you love him so much. And, like, MMA is like this great new guy who has a job and a house and wants to have kids and get married. But it's like Forrest Gump and Jenny. You know, she always going to the bad guys. So it's just a matter of time, man, before I settle down. <laughs> okay, interesting. And what do you make of this fight here that we got? Um, I don't watch tape. I know that that all my coaches said was that this girl had a rough, rocky beginning of her career, switched coaches, and had two really big, three big wins in a row, two coming stoppages in the first round. But they were like, Heather, I, I believe in you. So that's all I need to hear. Okay. They watch the tapes. They prepare me. I'm just going to go in there and do what I know how to do. And for someone being so young in the sport that's trying to get better, you know, build yourself up, is there like certain, obviously the main goal is to win the fight, but is there things within the fight that you're looking to accomplish as well? Well, I, I tried that in my last fight, right? Like I fought with Anna and I knew from the beginning she was going to try to get me down on the ground. So I had a really amazing wrestling coach in Rob Constance who prepared me so well for it. And like, I felt like it was such a big personal game. Like my bad jujitsu was better than her bad jujitsu, but all the fans hated it. Like they were sending me death threats and it was then that I realized that I'm before I'm an athlete I'm a performer I'm an entertainer and if I'm not entertaining then it doesn't matter so my personal goals don't really make a difference I got to go in there and beat the shit out of this girl and I don't really care how it looks because I got to give the fans what they want to see legitimate death threats what you got legitimate yeah. death threats people 
MMA fans were like, like I was crying the next day. I had to put my social media down. I got better feedback from when that girl broke my face than I did with the boring jiu-jitsu fight. Like I insulted the masses. Why do you think that is? Because um, it's not what they wanted to see, you know? As soon as one ticket is sold to a sporting event, it's not a sporting event anymore, it's a business. So you have to run this like a business. And for everyone who was saying to me, like, you didn't get hurt, you did so good, we were so proud of you. Those guys are the ones who pay the bills, you know? So I got to keep them wanting to see me. I'm fortunate that I have the chance to come back, and I got to remind all these fans why they love me. Perfect. Well, looking forward to that. We're glad to have you back. Thank you so much for the time, Heather. Appreciate it.